What is going on everyone and welcome back to another build video for the Dragon Bones expansion. This is pretty much just an update on my build and as always I'll be showing you gear, skills, food, and all that stuff, champion points. So not really much has changed from the past few expansions but I just wanted to update it because people have been asking me. This is my magic sword, my main character as of right now. Um, so before I start, I want to say this build is not supposed to be super min-max. It's more of what I do because um, unlike some other people who min-max everything, I play with a lot of different people and their skill gaps are at like a different scale. So what I use is mostly good for how I play and survivability. Whereas if I wanted to go absolute top tier damage, I could change a few things. So basically this is what I use and you can tweak it how you want, but this is just what I found comfortable with. And yeah, so let's start off with the gear because that is the most important one. And then we'll go into champion points and skills and then food and all that stuff. So before we start, basic things. Um, I have the apprentice. Mundestone increases your spell damage. This hasn't changed. This has been what we've used for the past, I don't know, half a year now. So, yeah, with that said, magic is at 53, health is at 11. Um, I would recommend trying to stay above 16.5k health. Before, it's usually above 17, but um, if you are doing dungeons and trials, sometimes some people use Ebon, and this is a pet build, so you're going to be above like 18,000. Oh. Let me use food so we can just get like an accurate thing. Um, before that, I would recommend using the Clockwork Filet food. It's slightly better than the Witch Mothers, but it's also like 30 times as expensive. So if you're using Witch Mothers, that is also good. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to use this one because money. And I'd rather not waste it. So um, with the Clockwork Filet, you're going to be above 17,000. And that's fine. Uh, with Wish Mothers, I am slightly under 17,000, which is also fine. If you get the 200 health you get is not actually super important. If you get one-shotted, you're going to get one-shotted regardless. So, yeah. Uh, let's summon our pet to show you our total health after everything is summoned. It should be around 18,000, which is way above average. At a point where you can probably just take out the points in health if you really wanted to. But I just feel more comfortable because I play with like a variety of healers where... Some of them are excellent, some of them are not. So, anyway, main bar, we have 37, close to 38,000 health, 35 with the Maelstrom bar. <clears throat> I'll do some uh, recommendations if you don't have various gear. So, I have a lot of gear that I use and swap out. Uh, one thing I have been playing with is the Zahn uh, shoulder and helm piece. You get this from the Scale Caller Peak dungeon. It's the new one. Now... This one is a very strong single target, but it doesn't do AoE. So if you want higher single target damage, Zahn is definitely the way to go. However, if you can't get it and you just don't have a party right now, Elambrus is also a good one. Now, Elambrus does a little bit less damage. However, it does AoE damage. So most of the time in Dungeons and Trials, there's going to be a lot of trash that you have to kill or adds during boss phases. So most of the time you're going to see me running a Lambrus. Um, Zahn is what I've been using to just like, you know, test out and see if it's good. And I did notice a little bit of a difference in damage. So if you want to do more single target, Zahn is the way to go. A Lambrus is for AoE. I think overall a Lambrus is just a slightly better one for total, like, like just overall. Because AoE and just there's a lot of ads and trash mobs everywhere. So... I recommend using that, or if you have like an add-on that swaps between both of them, definitely set that up. So the next piece we use is the Mechanical Acuity set. Now, this doesn't look great on paper, but when you actually sit there and do target dummy parses, it's not bad. Now, if you look at it, the two-piece gives weapon damage, and as a magic character, that's pretty irrelevant. You get spell damage, that's good. Um, the four-piece, you get both max magic and stamina. The stamina is pretty good, I guess, because you do have to block a lot of stuff in the new dungeons and trials, or not new trials, but like just trials in general. So you can roll dodge an extra one or two times, you can block a few more things, and the magic is always good. 
But what we're using it for is the five piece set. When you deal damage, which is anything, you have a 15% chance to gain like an extra vision for five seconds, basically uh, causing your attacks to always be critical. So let me do a quick test. Let's not like look at it. 45% um, crit, 22% uh, weapon crit. So let me just test something. Okay, so you notice you have it when you're glowing blue. Now you look at your crit is at 145. Basically it adds 100 to the total. And for five seconds, that's when you, if you have all your dots down and you line up your timing, it does a lot of damage over a lot of stuff. However, um, this is only once every 18 seconds. So you really do have to make it count and do your rotation accurately. Oh, my pet's attacking. So if you can manage that, mechanical acuity does a lot of damage. If not, um, there's another set you can use Necropotence. And that one we've used like three patches ago. I never tossed mine, so that is also one. Because I do use a pet build, Necropotence does a lot of extra damage with the pet, but that is more pet management. So if you play on PC, you have to hold Y and then left or right click to assign it to a target. And um, one thing I noticed that I don't really manage my pet as well in the newer content. So I kind of like just using this one where I can actually manage my timers a little bit more. However, I do still have both sets and I swap it in between and depending on the situation on what I'm doing. So yeah, I guess overall the stats are the same. I use all divines. Some people have been using a health enchant on their heavy piece. What I use is 511 and what that means is five light pieces, one heavy, one medium because of the bonus that you get with the uh, what was it? It was something. It was a passive. I don't, well, it's anyway. It's one of the passives. If you get, if you use one piece, and you get some extra bonuses, and ideally you want five for light because that's your main one, and the extra health for the one of that. So that's good, and of course we're going to be using a destruction staff so everything maxed out. So aside from that. We use five Mechanical Acuity, two Zahn or Alambris, and four Moon Dancer. Now, I've been told that the Perfected, or the, even the Imperfected, uh, Asylum staff is pretty good. Um, now, if that was the case, you could probably use three Moon Dancer, and the, what is it, the Perfected or Imperfect uh, Asylum staff, and then the Maelstrom staff. Once again, if you don't have the Asylum Staff, you could use Four Piece Moon Dancer. Or if you don't have Moon Dancer at this point, Normal Maw is really easy to farm. You could even pug it at this point, I think. Um, well, if you don't have Moon Dancer, you can always do Willpower, and that's a good three piece set. And then you can use just two of any staff or just whatever you want. So I've also been testing a little bit between a Moon Dancer Inferno and Moon Dancer Lightning, or just like double Lightning versus one Inferno, one Lightning. I do believe that the Lightning might do a little bit extra damage because a lot of our skills are dots and you might do more, but weaving with the Inferno is slightly easier for me and I kind of just like it more. It's personal preference, but... If you want to min-max, I think double lightning is slightly better. But really, ultimately, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. And once again, Maelstrom. Um, I personally use Nernhoned and the weapon damage enchant. If you, you can transmute it at this time. So, I mean, you don't have to actually farm Maelstrom that many times anymore. You can just trait change it. It shouldn't be that hard. Uh, Nernhoned for your back bar is usually the best way to go. Infused with shock damage on your main bar is also what everyone else uses. So, um, in terms of food, we discovered that. I would recommend using this if you can. It's also like almost 3,700 gold, at least on NA. I'm not sure how much it is on console or EU. So, if you can afford it, definitely go with this one. This is technically better, but if you can't or you just want to save money... Uh, Witch Mothers is also good. It's also about like 3,500 gold less per two hours. So ultimately, up to you. Both are good. If you want to absolute min-max the health and uh, 
magic. Then slightly better, increase max magicka by 34.58. Um, and then 31 says a slight bonus and ultimately up to you. So with that said, um, let's go into the gear. And if I were to swap it into, I have these set up. This is an add-on called Alpha Gear. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this. You have, you can just set up and then click a button and we're good. So now we have the Lambrus. This is our total ending stats on that one. So we lose a little bit of magic, but we gain spell crit. And if you want more magic, go Lambrus. If you don't care about your magic and you're good at rotations, but you want higher crit, um, then use the other one. But for the most part, you're going to see me running a Lambrus more because uh, there's a lot of trash mobs and AoE is a little bit more important to me than just single target. All right, so let's go into our champion points because that is also the next most important thing that we're mostly going to see. Let's start with the red tree because this one is the one that's changed more often. This is what I've been using, 49-49, Hardy and Elemental Defender that hasn't changed. What we have done is take, or like we took out a few points over here. I think that, like, I don't know if this was intended multiple patches ago. But you have to round to the next full number to get the effect. So let's say it was like 15.99. It would round down to 15%. So you have to be at like 16 flat to get the next bonus jump. It's kind of dumb because I don't really understand why that would be a thing. But it is. So you have to round to the next full percentage to get the number. 56 in the Bastion. Effectiveness of your damage shields. Um, I've done both new dungeons on veteran. I've also done every single trial in the game on vet. And blocking is pretty good, turns out. So with that said, 44 in the ironclad, two in the spell shield, mostly because if I didn't have anything extra, you just kind of put in the spell shield because there's no percentage and you just dump your extra points into there and you're good to go. Um, I've been also testing whether I take out a few points from Ironclad and dumping it back into Thick Skin or, you know, Bastion. But overall, this really just changes depending on what you're doing. And I would just, you know, if you're doing like Sanctum, for example, you'd want more in Hardy. If you're doing literally everything else, you want more in Elemental Defender and Thick Skin. And I don't know. Depends on what you're doing. Let's go into Blue Tree. Now we have 81 into Thaumaturge. Uh, mostly for the 75 points. And then the 81 just boosted to the next percentage because we had a few extra points. 19 into Staff Expert. 18 into Master at Arms. Technically, I've been testing this out. I am not really sure. Um, I've been thinking about just taking out points from Staff Expert and just putting it more into Master at Arms because I don't know. This doesn't seem that great. It is, but ultimately it's personal preference. And then the big one, 33 in the Spell Erosion, 49 Elemental Expert, and 40 in the Elfborn. So with the build I currently have, I've been thinking about taking some points out of Spell Expert and putting more into Elfborn because, you know, when we crit with the uh, Mechanical Acuity, you want to do more damage. So... That's why we have some more into there. So I actually, so if we were to change anything, let's take all our points out of here. Actually, I don't even have the gold. Hold on, let me just. Hello there. <laughs> all right, we're good. So if I were to just show you what I would take out, take out some points into here and then put, I think 56 is the next jump point. Yeah, so 56 over here, and then you'd put three into here for the extra 2%. And over here in the green tree, this is more personal preference than anything because there's no real right or wrong way to build this one. But Warlord, you have 48 because you can break free. This is the jump point. It's 47 will round down to 17. 48 will be at 18, so. Arcanist. Your magic recovery is at 12%. Um, what I've noticed is if you can do your rotation right and you're with good people, 
you usually get a lot of synergies and your magic recovery itself is not as important and when you do a heavy which you should be doing twice in your rotation it increases by 14 percent so that's always good and the next jump point would be at 15 percent i believe when that's 24 points so it's not really worth putting 100 into it you'd be better off using it somewhere else uh roll dodge and block this one is you know personal preference you can do whatever you want if you don't think you need as much block so that's where i assigned it these are kind of optional you can put these wherever you want if you wanted to put more in warlord for some reason you can that's how i set mine up i think you can min max it a little bit better um in the blue tree but ultimately whatever you want is or whatever you feel comfortable with so staff expert at three 56 into Elfborn. This is what I've been testing, and ultimately I've been putting out some decent numbers. Alright, so let's go with the skills. Um, if you watched my previous videos, none of it has changed, but we'll go over it just in case you are a new player or have no idea what's going on. So main bar, this is the Moondancer Inferno. Back bar is the Maelstrom Lightning. So let's go over this. Um, number one, we have our Hardened Ward. Now, I've seen people test Hardened Ward versus the um, Harness Magicka, which is the morph of this one. Um, personally, the difference is this shield gives about like 15,000 magic or shield, 15,000 shield, but it gives you extra magic. Whereas the Hardened Ward gives you about 20,000 shield, but it doesn't give you the magic. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I play with a variety of different people. So skill gaps is not like something I know. So if I play with a random person and they're completely bad, I think the higher shield is a little bit more beneficial to me. Uh, so, you know, ultimately it's up to you. If you can sustain well, I think Hardened Ward would be slightly better. But if you're playing with like bad people, well, actually, I think just Hardened Ward is better in general, especially if you're running a pet. So, up to you if you want to use the light armor shield. You do get magic back on hit, but this one gives a higher shield. So, I personally value the higher shield a little bit more. Uh, Force Pulse on the Destro. Uh, I've been playing around with both morphs. In the new dungeon, Fanglair, without spoiling the actual dungeon for you, um, there's a lot of stuff you have to interrupt. And sometimes... You have other people that run on interrupts, but sometimes you don't. I personally am one of those players that just rather have higher damage, like a force pulse. Ultimately, it's up to you. And then we have our pet, of course. The familiar. Have this on both bars, otherwise it'll cancel out when you bar swap. Pretty standard. Crystal fragments. Um, pretty standard. It does you like force pulse and you prox you hit the button and you just get more damage now i've seen other builds do this and where they took off the force pulse in crystal fragments and they replaced it with the bound armor now that means you would have an easier rotation and all you do is have heavy and your magic will pretty much never go below 50 percent However, when I've done that one, it's just not a fun thing to do. I just don't like that. So I'd rather run Force Pulse and Crystal Frags. But ultimately, personal preference, I just per found the other like heavy build really boring. I just didn't enjoy it. So that's why I used this combination instead of the extra bound armor. And then Inner Light, it just gives you a maximum energy or a maximum, not energy, magic and crit. So does this one, you have Shooting Star just for the passives. You don't really use it much, but sometimes you do depending on what the situation, but ultimately you're gonna be destroying everything. So let's go into our back bar. Once again, in the Destro line, Blockade. Pretty much every magic class uses it. You should know what it is at this point. Blockade, really good. Liquid Lightning, this is what you open your rotation with. And it's a very strong dot in a circle. Very good to have. Volto Familiar. Once again, you have to have it on both bars, otherwise it'll cancel out. It's pretty standard. Now, Daedric Prey versus Haunting Curse. Um, I've actually been thinking about swapping it, 
to the haunting curse because sometimes there's a lot of ads and I don't manage my pet as well. So if you can manage your pet, you'll do more damage. If you can't, haunting curse on a single target would be slightly better. But you also lose out on damage. So haunting curse would be better if you didn't run a pet or you're just bad at management. So if you want to try to like get better at it, Daedric Prey, um, you have to cast this twice. Like Haunting Curse, it does the explosion and then does another explosion without recasting. Whereas this one, you'd have to recast every six seconds. So more management and it'll like go into your rotation a little bit easier. And then Major's Wrath is your execute. Pretty standard. Um, you could have the other morph, which I think gives magic back, but this one gives more or does more damage, so pretty standard. And then, of course, we all know the Elemental Rage Destro ult that we've all died to somewhere in PvP, and you couldn't see it. But anyway, Destro ult, you're going to be using this for the most part. It's good. You should get it. Get all the passives as well. We are playing a high elf, and a lot of people have been asking me what the best one to choose is. And I would personally say high elf, but if you're using Inferno staff like I am, dark elf is also a good one. Breton is also decent, but this I think top tier is high elf. Um, what else do we talk about? I think all of this is you know just personal preference. Undaunted. Uh, oh yeah, this is where you get the health, stamina, and magic for all the extra things you have, so max that out. I think you want everything here. This one is kind of irrelevant, but I mean, reduces the magic and health cost of your major skills abilities. Um, this does not affect your ultimate, so the only thing you'd be using, you should never really be casting inner light, but... Maybe sometimes in PvP, but it's not really that important in PvE. So, if you want to get it, you could, but you shouldn't really be casting this. And, unless you're in Cyrodiil or somewhere. Max all of these out. Make sure to get um, the recovery and sneak. This one's kind of irrelevant because you don't really do weapon damage. And, if you're using the one piece heavy, the extra health and resistances are good. And pretty much just get everything. This one's kind of irrelevant. I just never got rid of it. I don't... It takes too long to cast, but I think it does a little bit more damage. And you'd have to run double lightning staves for it to be a little bit better. LA Drain. Sometimes I use this when our healers are kind of bad. And... Yeah. And I have to cast it as a DPS, which you should really never do. But sometimes I have to. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all in terms of skills. If you were to swap out anything, if you don't like the pet, um, there are other swap outs. Like you could take out Force Pulse and Crystal Frags, put into armor. If you don't like running the pet, then you could take that out for armor. Or you could take this out and run the double pet, which I've never actually done. I'm not sure how well double pets do, the Twilight. But if you want to try it, I guess it works. But I've never tested it, so you do that at your own time. Um, let's see, what else? We went over champion points, gear, skills, food, Wonder Stone. I think that's pretty much everything. But one thing, I guess I could go over some small recommendations for what you should do if you don't have Moon Dancer or Mechanical Acuity. Uh, this one is crafted, actually. Um, you do need the Clockwork City expansion. You can get it, the crafting station is somewhere around here. I did it on my other character. I don't have it on this one, but somewhere. Take the way shrine where you start the mission and then go backwards and the crafting station is somewhere around here. And I would recommend 511. That means five light, one medium, one heavy, but up to ultimately up to you. Uh, the reason why we chose heavy on the body piece was because it gives the higher armor compared to if we chose like I don't know something else so I think it's slight min max but I just don't know I think it just gives higher or if you wanted to put like a health glyph on here it would give more but what I did was just put points into here because 
technically, it is cheaper to just respec your points by the health bar or the attributes instead of using the CUDA. So it's like 3,000 gold to respec it on here, whereas having a CUDA... Oh, lag. Hold on. One CUDA is... Where did it go? Around the same price, but if you want to actually save 38 gold that the MM tells you, then just attribute point. But yeah, um, ultimately that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you have any questions, let me know. This is one parse I had. This was solo. This was no LA drain or anything. Oh, actually, hold on. Uh, it's not great, but I didn't have any buffs on it. I think I could have done a little bit better. I screwed up my rotation a few times, but this is solo. No LA drain. Um... We were trying to Zon Hel or Zon set on this one, but I think a Lambrus is also good. And we also had the um, mechanical acuity right here. So, oh yeah, this add-on is called um, Combat Metrics. It pretty much gives you a detailed thing of what you, like, your percentage uptimes and everything. This is once every 18 seconds that you can proc it, and I pretty much have damage up at all times, so I think this is accurate. I have no idea. Need a little bit more testing. This is the set, and we're using Zahn. So it's pretty up there. Zahn actually does a lot of damage when you're single target parsing. So that's what I did. And I think in a full, this is solo, so if I did it in a raid situation where full buffs were a thing, LA Drain, War Horns, what else? I don't know, just everything was debuffed to zero. I think I could do like between at minimum 45 to, I don't know, 50 something. But that says uh, magic, and if you're playing Stam, obviously I think you can parse into 60s, but I'm not that good. So, <laughs> with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, I'll answer it in the comments, or if you have your own build that you would like to share, feel free to let me know. I personally like the mechanical acuity a little bit more than the necropotence because this one you have to like rely on your pet to you know not die so this one where you just have to manage your timers ultimately up to you but with that said see you guys later hope you guys enjoyed it thanks so much for watching